Hey guys, welcome back to Willpower Garage. Today I'm working on a 2008 Chevy Tahoe with an intermittent stalling problem. Follow along, I'll show you guys a couple of the things that might be wrong as well as give you uh, a link to the technical bulletin that addresses this concern. Okay guys, so this Tahoe here is my mother's truck. And I've done a lot of work to this thing recently, um, mostly because the camshaft timing chain um, fell apart. Uh, the plastic in there just fell apart, disintegrated. So I ended up doing uh, basically a top end rebuild. Uh, the cylinder heads were pretty wiped out and everything. Um, but after that, she kept complaining about low oil pressure. I didn't really think much of it. Um, you know, I, I had replaced the oil pump uh, after I did the camshaft and everything, so it had a new seal on the pickup tube. Everything seemed okay. She still was complaining that the, the oil pressure would drop and then the engine would stall. So I started looking around more at what I could change or look at for the oil pressure. Every time I looked at this thing, oil pressure was perfect. What I ended up doing was dropping the oil pan, check inside there to make sure that the pickup screen itself was clean. There was no issues there. Uh, put the oil pan back up, checked it. Oil pressure was perfect. Even checked it with mechanical gauge. Was reading the same as the cluster gauge. Gave it back to her. She drove it a couple of days and then started complaining about the issue again. What she was telling me was when she went into reverse to back into the driveway, it would stall. So, long story short, we ended up switching cars so I could drive this thing around for a while. Finally threw a code for me, and the code was telling me that the ECU could not communicate to the TCU and vice versa. So it was saying there was an issue with the data line or the communication line for uh, between those two modules. Now, these things are known to have a couple of issues, and I'll link down below um, the technical bulletin that I'm referring to. Basically what it says is if you have an open or a short to uh, for your CAN bus, check these areas more or less. And it could be anything from all the way in the back of the truck to a ground that's somewhere over here, uh, ground on the engine, basically anything. So that got me to looking around a little bit into the wiring. And just the other day, I started to notice that the volt gauge would start dropping down from 14 volts down to 10, 9. And then I started seeing the gauges doing funny things like the tack would jump around, all kinds of weird. So I got under the hood, started wiggling some wires, and the main harness that comes down on the driver's side over the valve cover, down past the power steering pump, and then underneath the balancer, um, it has the coolant temp sensor on it, as well as the cam signal plug on it when I wiggled that harness I got the truck to stall so with all that being said I want to show you guys what I found on this now keep in mind that's just what I found on this I'm just giving you guys this information in case you run into a similar issue um, you can check this area uh, basically what I found was where the ground lug went to the engine block one of the two smaller wires, there's, there's, there's three wires in total, two ring lugs that go to the ground. One of the two smaller wires literally broke all the strands in one, in, in the spot where it goes into the strain relief for the ring lug. So what was happening was, as long as the harness was lax, it was making enough ground connection uh, so everything was working right. But if the motor torqued up or whatever when you go into reverse it would break the connection long enough that it would stall out the engine so let me show you guys um, underneath here what I'm talking about all right so as you can see I started removing all of the loom off of the harnessing and everything trying to see where this issue was now these are the two grounds there's one there and here's the other one these grounds go all 
over here. I know this is hard. There, that stud right there. They go onto that stud. That's the ground that's going to the engine block. I don't know if this is going to show up on camera. Let me see if I can focus here. But that wire on the right side there is actually broken. And as I flexed it, I could see the strands are separated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to splice back these wires and I'm going to put a new ring lug on this and then retape all my harness. But like I said, this is just what I found as my issue on here. So again, that's why I'm going to link below the technical bulletin. So you guys, if you do run into this code, you can go around and check all your uh, grounding points. All right, guys, I hope you liked today's video. It's a real short one. I just felt like this is probably important information just so, you know, if you guys are running into this issue, pulling your hair out, you can see that even though the ground looks good, you need to look at it a little closer because, like I said, at first glance, I thought it was fine. I just cleaned up the connection, put it back on, and it was still getting the same issue. As I was looking at it a little more closely, I saw the ends of the wire there broken. So I know I literally have an open connection to my ground. So like I said, I'm going to fix this connection uh, and hopefully get this thing back up and running properly. So guys, please don't forget to like and subscribe. If you do find these videos helpful, um, you know, there is a super thanks. You guys can send me a couple bucks. It's usually beer money for the garage. You know, it really does help out. It does take me time to make these videos and especially edit them down so they're a little bit more watchable so you guys can get the information you need without having to scroll through everything. But uh, that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.